All right, it says it's recording now. Hello, everybody. Hello. This is Haplo. Yes, we Hi. got. We are joined by Esso the Free, myself, Filthy Heretic, Hoplu, and Pumpkin. And today we're going to be talking about Hop. Hoppa. Hoppa. However you want to pronounce that freaking last name. It's Hoppa, be it's Hoppa because it's German. I mean, it doesn't really make sense that you pronounce his name Hoppa, but then you call people who follow uh, Hoppa's work Hoppians. I mean, it does. It kind of makes sense because uh, Hoppe is a German name, whereas Hoppeen, well, it does come from Hoppe, but I don't know. It's English. Yeah, but it's, but it's the Ian Eng part of it is a uh, modification. So if the Ian part of Hoppe would be the modification, then why why are you pronouncing the the extended e at the end of his name? It, you'd yeah. think it would just be pronounced hop then, but whatever. That, that's wow. my th that's my thinking. It's sort of like if you are required to adopt the accent of any foreign word, then I mean, what is it like? Fifty percent of the English language comes from Old French. We would have yeah. to be I mean, speaking I mean, in French accents, and then think about terms from other languages like jalapeno. The correct pronunciation therefore would be jalapeno, which of course you, is. Anyway, think it would be like anyways, let's not, Yeah. <laughs> anyways, not to get too off topic, I we're at, we're actually recording the audio, right? We're not going to come back an hour later and realize that the entire time it was mute, are we? I have the OBS open right now. It's picking up both of our audio, and it says it's recording. So, all right, that's the best indication I can get. Just uh, making sure. But yes, yes uh, we're here today uh, in a debate about the merits and uh, quality of uh, the libertarian thinker Hans Hermann Hoppe. Uh, I am. I believe that Hoppe is a, a good, a good thinker. Uh, has provided a lot of value for libertarians. And I believe that a lot of the criticism thrown his way is misguided and inaccurate. And uh, uh, S.O. and Filthy Heretic, uh, they do not. They uh, Actually, I'll let you describe what you believe about Hans Hermann Hoppe. All right. I gladly will, because uh, out of the uh, ANCAP circles, I was one of the early ones to be critical of Hans Hermann Hoppe. I think that uh, he definitely. I think it would be inaccurate to characterize my view of Hans Hermann Hoppe as he contributes nothing. Because no, I, th I think there are some comments that he's made, or at the very least, he came from an from a uh, a well-meaning and accurate premise, which is um, a, a great example would be argumentation ethics. In fact, I I've applied a, a variation of argumentation ethics in some of my videos and I uh, critique relativist ethical systems I note that it is a contradiction to something can be subjectively ethical but anyway um, I have noticed an unmistakable pattern a, a very pronounced pattern in the libertarian circle, uh, some people who don't have a very uh, nuanced or detailed understanding of libertarian philosophy have dubbed this the libertarian to alt-right pipeline. But it is anybody who starts becoming like a, a, a large fan of Hans Hermann Hoppe and starts really uh, watching his content and his version of Hop of uh, Rothbardian libertarianism, like his slant to it, uh, within about a month to a month and a half, uh, that's generally the amount of time it takes, they will inevitably revert back to statism, and they always go back to a specific form of statism. Generally, it's either fascism or monarchism. And was really weird until I started, you know, I, I I noticed that was the one thing all these people, like, uh, 
Christopher Chase Rachels, uh, well, that guy T, uh, Love Life and Anarchy, all the ones who went status, that's the one thing which they all have in common, which is that right before they went status, they started talking a lot about Hans Hermann Hoppe. So I started reading Hans Hermann Hoppe, I read Democracy the God That Fails, and my god is it obvious to see the reason why. incredibly critical of Hans Hermann Hoppe because he is a uh, he, he is a gateway drug to authoritarianism from a libertarian perspective and beliefs are out some not necessarily beliefs but some of his ethical arguments along with some of his beliefs are demonstrably inaccurate and uh, also are demonstrably unethical that's all I have to say uh hot blue uh that I'll let you make uh, individual criticisms or uh, lay down arguments on me. Um, unless, uh, unless filthy has uh, unless filthy has something to say himself. Uh, I was rambling for like five straight minutes, so you can go ahead. Uh, that will not uh, be necessary. Just, He's pretty much said everything I would have said. All right. Well, um, ju just lay down things one at a time on me, and I'll see, and I'll uh, respond to them one by one. Well, first uh, off, oops, sorry. Well, first off, uh, yeah, sorry for interrupting earlier, but the big thing that I want you to really address is the libertarian to alt right pipeline. People used to believe that it's a myth, but you can see it time and time again. People who were previously principled libertarians, even status <laughs> libertarians, they begin to look into Hans Hermann Hop and the inevitable results, like with very few exceptions, they always become either some form of ethno-nationalist, general nationalist, monarchist, or outright fascist. And I've even talked to a lot of people who say that it was Hop that really got them into these ideas. To say nothing of, you can usually see this process in action when you speak to other Hoppians they will always try to create special exceptions and differences in terms. The m most common one I've heard is that the government is not a state. And well, the I'll get they to get that. For, uh, I'll, we'll talk about that after I address the uh, libertarian to all right pipeline. Sure. Um, basically, if you actually look at sort of like, if you actually like, um, like obviously there are no hard numbers on like sort of the... Uh, libertarians who want to call themselves libertarians and then go to the alt-right there's there's no way to calculate the actual number of that but if you actually think about it it's kind of gone down uh, in the past like year or two like it, uh, there's and there hold up though there's um and the reason why is because of the um like what i think is because of the total collapse of the uh delusion that libertarians and the alt-right should unite to fight the left, uh, which is and the sort of binding glue of um, the alt-right and the uh, libertarians is, of course, Hans Hermann Hoppe, because Hoppe uh, is, well, well, it's an, well, he's obviously, I do not, he is not a uh, sort of alt-right or fascio or not, he's not even a monarchist in any way. Uh, he is he does have ideas that um, the alt-right tend to sympathize with, or rather ideas the alt-right think they would sympathize with. For example, um, physical removal, which we'll talk about later, uh, physical removal of leftists and uh, um, the like, uh, that's, that, that heavily appeals to the alt-right. Obviously, it's a misinterpretation of what he said, what he actually said, but um, it's one of those things where it's sort of like the binding glue. And, of course, uh, eventually, as time went on, and um, both libertarians and the alt-right realized that they absolutely despised one another, you had cases of basically um, uh, sort of the, the, the everything falling apart, the scenes... 
the seams breaking and you had people pick, basically picking sides. Uh, so, uh, for example, um, let's say that uh, I'm libertarian one day and the alt-right, oh, and I have sympathies for the alt-right because of the uh, alt-right and cap alliance, um, and it's starting to fall apart, and the, I have more sympathies to the alt-right, and I start to have more sympathies to the alt-right than I have to libertarians, and eventually as the alliance falls apart, you get the situation where they both start attacking to at, attacking one another, and um, if you're in the gray area of uh, libertarian and alt-right, like, uh, uh, what's the, I'm trying to think of the best way to summarize this in a short amount of time, but basically... It's like being on one side of a bridge, like one of those uh, open-up bridges to allow uh, boats to pass through. Like, you know uh, you know, one of those things? Draw bridges. Yeah, draw bridges. Um, and, of course, you have, like, the, well, the right side, which anything on the right side will fall continuously towards the right, and the same with the left towards the left. That is what I believe uh, is the... Um, was the uh, libertarian to alt right pipeline? Uh, the not the not Hans Hermann Hoppe, who has met plentiful criticisms of what he likes to call conservative conservative or nationalist socialism, uh, as well as um, protectionist tariffs, which uh, he actually actually I'll, I'll save that for later. What he told Bat, Pat Buchanan, but um, it's one of those things where. Hoppe's on the scene, but he's not the cause. He was the glue, but not the reason. Well, um, first of all, even... It's sort of hard to pinpoint exactly where the uh, libertarian to alt-right pipeline sort of... Uh, where that... Not necessarily... Where is that? Where the idea that libertarians and alt writers could merge to fight the left, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where that idea fell apart. Uh, I think 2018, early 2018, would be a good indicator, and I, I would agree it's more, more likely because uh, the concept of individual secession um, started to be a more practical... Uh, means of achieving libertarian libertarianism either through agorism or accelerationism etc whereas all the hop you know the hoppians tends to be vocab so all they have really is be better and it gives me mommy's chicken tendies they don't have a they don't have a real uh way of actually achieving their goals That's and um nice. That's actually not true. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but um, basically what uh, Hoppe himself has proposed is basically to tear the nation states apart, basically to literally tear them apart by means of uh, secessionism as well as... Um, I'm not talking about what Hoppe is arguing. I'm talking about the sort of... No, uh, the, the Hoppe and the his followers agree... Like they have a, they don't believe in the they don't believe in the system. Like uh, I don't know. there's been talk of a Hoppian party recently. I don't know where you heard that from. But I have like I have nowhere in any of the circles of like uh Hoppians have I or Mises or property uh, the property and freedom society or was it the Freedom? I forgot what it was called. Yeah, Property Freedom Society. Has there any been any talk about a uh, hop in party? So uh, either that's a meme or it's I'm something so it. small like that I'm talking about with followers. But uh, and it's still happening, even though the 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 idea, the meme that libertarians and alt writers could ever fight against the left is sort of collapsed. Tanner Croson is a great example. Oh, God. Just, like, within the last few months, he went... Um, um, I, I don't know what he's calling himself, but... Uh, I mean, like, Tanner is a... Tanner is a fucking nutcase of uh, basically a journey 
around basically every single political spectrum you can think of the like all of them and he's just it's, as I, I i wouldn't say that tanner's a good example for anything ever but no. another one i can think of another one i can personally mm -hmm. think of is uh pragmatic culture oh i don't know if, yeah. I don't know if you remember him, but... an he's an example of an individualist who started getting into hop and now considering himself a white nationalist. Well, here's the thing about uh, pragmatic culture. He's a fucking idiot. Um, and if you actually, like, confront him on things like uh, like what Hoppe said, it's, he, he you actually talk to him, it's like he's never even heard of Hoppe. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously he's uh, heard of Hoppe, but he likes to... It's like he never read anything of him. And that's another thing about sort of a Hoppeans of whom supposedly transitioned to the alt-right. They don't fucking read him. I think this is actually, you're identifying something pretty important in the sense that, have you are you familiar with the concept of death of the author? Uh, yes, I am. All right. Uh, would, you mind yeah, just explain, I, would you mind just uh, it explaining is, it to the audience real quick? Yeah. Uh, I was asking you to. Oh, sorry. Uh, basically, death of the... Uh, uh, no, I'm trying to think of the best explanation. Um, uh, basically, it's... When the author is irrelevant to the text, sort of like... Uh, or the or not the text, but the interpretation of the text. The, it, it goes completely against uh, the author's intentions and is uh, misconstrued... Uh, misconstrued um, I probably gave you a bastardized definition of the phrase, but... No, that's pretty that's, good. Yeah. But you can think... I'm pretty sure you can think of several examples off the top of your head. The, oh, yeah. the one I like to use most often is uh, Nietzsche. He was a oh, huge God. critic against... Uh, what was Nihilism. It Nihilism. And he ends up being like the number one most often used citation in favor of nihilism. And you have yep. the same thing with the Constitution of the United States, particularly the Bill of Rights, where you have all sorts of statists, of statist authoritarians who want to increase the size, power, and authority of the government, pointing to the Bill of Rights tells us that we want to use this, whereas you can point to several citations in both speeches and writings by the people who wrote the actual Bill of Rights, showing that clearly that that's not true, but that's how they interpret it. I think it's the same yes. thing with hop with hop that you well, have a lot of uh, that you have a lot um, of uh, things sorry I wasn't finished you yeah, have a lot of things being said in democracy the god that failed and several of his essays and several of his other lectures where there is something in the book there's something in the text that clearly hop didn't intend to put there but were pop but are popularly interpreted as being true or at least being the true intent of the writing by his own followers. Oh, well, no. Yes. And that's the thing which I would, like, I see uh, you're attempting to characterize uh, this movement which is following Hoppe's writings as being uh, disconnected from the author himself. Um, but as early as 2017, uh, he started... Uh, I, I don't remember the name of the organization that he's with in Germany, but uh, because it's, it's basically the German equivalent of Mises, the one place he uh, does... Property and that. Freedom Society. Uh, one at a time. Freedom yes. Society. Um, yeah, he did a lecture about the alt-right, and he essentially explained uh, himself how uh, ethno-covenant communities are... are uh, his ideas, so he uh, was making the deliberate attempts to try and attract those people. Now, I'm not saying that uh, mm -hmm. uh, that alone makes it a statist or uh, ethno-nationalist idea, but these are not mutually exclusive positions. Even Hoppe argued that uh, they're compatible with uh, his idea of a, a stateless society. But if you actually start to get into uh, his idea of what a stateless society would be, it's really important to uh, take note, like you sort of brushed off what Filthy Heretic was trying to say, 
about the uh, the equivocation uh, argument Hop tries uh, Hoppe tried to make by separating a government from a state. That's well, very important, and that's a big part of the reason where I think Hoppianism fails. It's that Hoppe doesn't political author po political authority. I don't think, and I don't think he understands necessarily uh, the nature of the state. He uh, argues that his uh, he argues that his uh, covenant communities would uh, effectively have to have a monopoly on arbitration in order to function so that he would be able to create a uh, social order, a libertarian social order to uh, keep out the ghetto ethics. I mean, we'll, we'll get to ghetto ethics later, but... Um, uh, the, at, yeah, he doesn't necessarily... Uh, he doesn't uh, understand... Which way not? Hold up, hold up. What? I was just asking uh, SO to wrap it up because he's kind of going on. Sorry about that, but yeah, basically, um, is making is that uh, he doesn't understand what makes a state coercive, and in the process, he's arguing for exactly what makes states coercive. Hmm. All right, now let me address this uh, one by one. All right, now you make the claim that uh, Hapa that differentiates the government and the state. Uh, and the state is uh, the one, the less, either the less bad or the justified one. You make that assertion, correct? Well, he separates a government from the state. He didn't, he's not saying that the government and the state are separate entities, but yes. So, the, so you're saying, so, uh, you, you believe Hoppe says that uh, sort of the state or a monopoly on arbitration is justified in Hoppe's view, yes? Yeah, he makes that argument explicitly right. in right. Democracy to God that failed. Alright. Let me ask you, where does he say anything like this? Because uh, I have a whole bunch of, uh, ex there are a whole bunch of examples where Hoppe basically, uh, he not only does he uh, make a very obvious assertion that um, sort of the monopolization of arbitration as well as uh, the monopolization of the right to violate private property is, uh, of course, leads to a lower quality of arbitration as well as a higher price of it, as well as continuous expansion, uh, such yeah, as the um, given page. In, uh, these, oh, um, oh, crap. Uh, yeah. Am I? Do I actually? Can you actually hear me? Yes. I think yeah. I, all right. Yeah, good. Um, but so basically, I have not seen uh, any evidence that Hoppe supports a um, monopoly on violence. In fact, here is a quote from a speech given at Mises, the Mises Institute of Brazil in 2011. Uh, as a territorial monopolist on the of the ultimate decision making and law enforcement, the state is not just like any other monopoly, such as milk or a car monopoly that produces milk and cars of comparatively lower quality and higher prices. In contrast to all other monopolies, the state not only produces inferior goods, but quote unquote bads, non goods. In fact, it must produce bads, such as taxes, before it can produce anything that could be considered. A inferior good. So I don't exactly, from this quote, I don't exactly see Papa supporting a monopoly on violence. In fact, here's his definition of, of a state from the same speech. The state, according to the standard definition, is not a regular specialized firm. Rather, it is defined as an agency character characterized by two unique and logically connected features. First, the state is an agency that exercises a territorial monopoly on ult of ultimate decision-making. That is, the state is the ultimate arbiter in every case of conflict, including conflicts involving itself. It allows no appeal above and beyond itself. Second, the state is an agency that exercises a monopoly of taxation. That is, in it, that is, it is an agency that unilaterally fixes the price that private citizens must pay for the state state service as ultimate judge and enforcer of law and order. So, all right. He, uh, he has a very clear 
definition of state, which I, I believe you agree with, because that's kind of how you define state. Yes? Yeah, because that's functionally what a state is, but... Yeah, uh, that's it, what it, that is what a state is, and of course, uh, in Hans, in, Hans uh, in democracy, the god that failed, uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe expressly uh, states that the destruction of liberalism and the rise of socialism is caused by the liberals' acceptance of the monopoly on violence. Um, uh, here's a quote. What? Here's the last quote I'm going to give you. Um, Once the premise of government is accepted, liberals are left without argument when socialists pr pursue this premise to its logical end. If a monopoly is just, then centralization is just. If taxation is just, then more taxation, more taxation is also just. And if democratic equality is just, then the expropriation of private property is owners is just too, while private property is not. Indeed, what can a liberal say in favor of less taxation and redistribution? So, all right, Papa does clearly does not believe in a monopoly on violence, and uh, here's where he or here's where he uh, come with the up with the mistaken conclusion that he does, and that is, of course, his uh, theory of covenant communities. Am I correct? Uh, well, it's not a mistaken belief. He states very specifically that a monopoly on arbitration is needed to enforce a social order. Democracy, the God that failed, page 208. He, sa he states that you need to have a, a monopolistic social order. doesn't use that term, but it's logically implied from what he's arguing. That, really? uh, you, you need to have a, hegemo a hegemonic social order in order to... Uh, in ghetto ethics forcibly. So basically, everything uh, that he states, the monopoly, I believe that everything he states is um, like everything else that Hoppe states. Um, argumentation ethics, the uh, fact that the state is a monopoly on violence is unethical and is um, inherently destructive, and what he says to be decivilization de uh, de or decivilizing. Uh, you believe that he will he uh, puts that aside uh, all to stop ghetto ethics all right am I yes because I, it's he actually makes it very clear that uh, you can't that in his view you wouldn't be able to have uh, ghetto ethics in a libertarian society and that's fundamentally I don't think that he actually necessarily is being malicious make a, uh, a lot of classical libertarian arguments against the state, and he does seem to, uh, at the very least, conceptually understand some of the basic problems. The The issue is, um, and that's, this is another big part of the reason why it's important to note the distinction he attempts to make between government and state, is this goes into sort of the, the problem with his worldview, which is well, for one thing, he doesn't necessarily seem to understand the uh, concept of how a coercive tyranny comes into being, and we'll get back to that in a second, but it's this um, sort of proto-Hobbesian uh, idea of a state of nature within a libertarian society that uh, Papa clings on to, I think it causes some cognitive dissonance in his uh, worldview. Like, he makes it pretty clear that it, um, you need to have a uh, sort of a sort of centralized body, and you need to have a social order dictated by the centralized body. Otherwise, uh, in a in a libertarian society, you would basic everyone would basically just be a bunch of nihilists and drug addicts. I have never once in uh, my life heard Hoppe say that we need a uh, centralized body, and every speech, every article, and every book he what reads pretty much contradicts that. And uh, you have a supposed... Um, to, that is his attempt to remedy his perceived uh, problem with, a li with the uh, social order in a libertarian society. Really now. Well, he does explicitly say that any such a, any such covenant community, any such libertarian society that develops, would have to be 
but would have to be incredibly intolerant of behaviors that Hop personally does not like, things he perceives to be degenerate. I don't think he uses the word degenerate specifically, but he does very much dislike, I think the term he used was alternative lifestyles, which is where the physical removal principle comes into play. Obviously, hold on. Now, principle... hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, here's uh, what Hoppe... Hoppe isn't exactly saying... No, actually, he isn't exactly saying. He isn't saying that there should be a, a giant centralized power going and shooting up the gays. He's basically saying in a sort of... Uh, it's sort of a, an advice thing. Like, if a community wants to survive, they should keep the streets clean. This is, uh, this is pretty obvious. It avoids diseases. It... Uh, it, it, it attracts more people if the streets are clean as opposed to if they're covered in glass and shit, etc., um, etc. Et but he's not saying that people should be forced to clean it. It is just sort of a... It's one of those things. It's like saying you need to eat food to survive. And it's one of, and he believes that due to the superior output of sort of um, conservative traditionalist uh, family unit cultures that... Uh, in a sort of spontaneous development communities that will um, uh, uh, or sort of covenant communities which we'll get to in a bit will uh, uh, not sort of spontaneously and naturally shift tend towards more uh, conservative traditionalist family lifestyles uh, because they produce the best output and are sort of it's sort of like a market goods uh, goods that don't that aren't very good they get purged, not by force, but by the market, because nobody wants to buy them, or nobody wants to live uh, places that are covered in glass and shit. Um, so so made, this. He did make it explicitly clear that uh, force was to be used by these communities on uh, page 208 to 209 of, Demo of Democracy, the God that Failed. I have it on, argued, I have it on page 218. It, Mind if I take a quote? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Removal, then I can explain that right yeah. away, because it is quite possibly the biggest misquote in human history. You probably know this quote already then. Uh, and on page 218, he says, There can be no tolerance towards Democrats and Communists in a libertarian social order. They will have to be physically separated and expelled from society. Likewise, in a covenant founded for the purpose of protecting family and kin, there can be no tolerance towards those habitually promoting lifestyles incompatible with this goal. They, the advocates of alternative, non-family and kin-centered lifestyles, such as, for instance, individual hedonism, parasitism, nature-environment worship, homosexuality, or communism, will have to be physically removed from society, too, if one is to maintain a libertarian order. This, of course, there is very easily. Maybe I'm taking it out of context. Maybe I completely. No, you're not. I saying, can't be wrong. I'm just thinking that. Is, oh, oh, oh let you, me explain. Hold on, Professor. Well, let me explain. Uh, let Please. Kelsey finish. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm just thinking. Like, maybe my understanding of this is incorrect. But this is yes. very much a positive prescription towards getting an organization, namely this ambiguous group called society to remove people who are otherwise engaging in behaviors that are in no way harmful or aggressive to anyone else. For example, individual hedonism. Of course, who in power gets to speak for society, how this is done, is something that's left terribly ambiguous. Yes. So All right, now let me, let me sort of explain sort of the terminology that Hoppe uses, uh, starting with advocates of these things, like... Uh, alternative lifestyles, individual hedonism, environment worship, homosexuality, etc., etc. He doesn't say uh, homosexuals or environment worshippers or individual hedonists. He says advocates of. What this does, what this means is what he's, what he's saying. <clears throat> Shit. What he stated that he is not people who do these things, but sort of uh, the social justice warriors like it, it actually, it's it sounds cheesy, but that is actually legitimately the way to describe it. Sort of the, like say, an advocate of homosexuality uh, would uh, tear down heterosexuality to promote or to advocate homosexuality. He believes those are uh, legitimately bastards, which they are, um, as I'm sure everyone here can agree. And of course, 
as things like Democrats and Communism to him, which he points out, is sort of like a promise of violence. Um, sort of, um, like it's sort of a, I, it's sort of like calling yourself a robber. It's, uh, it's one of, because, um, as you all know, Communists and Democrats in, in, inherently uh, initiate, um, force and violation of private property to achieve their ends, uh, such as communism and democracy, redistributism, etc., etc. So it's essentially a promise of violence. It's like saying, I am a rapist, or I am a killer, or I am a robber, etc., etc. That's what it means to him. And of course, then there's the big one that is called a physically removed. Of course, what Hoppe means by this is not removed as in the verb, but removed as in the adjective. What this doesn't mean is, um, loaded onto a helicopter and then thrown into the ocean. He did, he expressly states, stated multiple times, years after, that he does not mean this. What he actually means is physically removed from civil society, and what this means is sort of, um, uh, uh, clubs kick you out, uh, stores ban you, people shun you and spit on you, etc., etc., in a sort of voluntary association kind of way. Uh, kind of like if someone exactly. stated... Oh, go ahead. That's exactly the point. If uh, all of society is centered around these covenant communities, which are, I mean, I would argue they're de facto, they're just de facto city-states, uh, oh, if, you, you know, if, if, they're, if they're functioning as these private entities throw people out and do this, then, then yes, that, that would be somebody who that would be an uh, initiating force to physically remove these people from society and Hoppe th didn't argue any any different that's the I mean point would... of a covenant that's the point of a covenant community in fact and, and the reason I mean even he un understands you know that it is basically he, he likened the whole thing to a uh a physical social contract. Really now. So yeah, before yeah. We, before we get into that, I just want to make the point that removing people based on what they advocate for rather than what they actually do actually makes things worse because we're at the point where you can people can be expelled from society, which I mean if he meant if he meant just mass disassociation or being blacklisted from society, he wouldn't have said the word physically removed. That's no, he would have, and he did. Uh, he expressly states. Uh, he's redef what he he's meant. redefining what those words mean. No, he removed, physically removed, uh, sort of like off your property or from society, not by force of a central government, but by society itself voluntarily. How yeah, will it's, so how will society? It's, how does this? Uh, well, one out of one at a time. Don't go first. Okay. How does society physically remove you from your own property, and what justification they, do they have for that? That Hoppe is a never, state. Hoppe, Hoppe never at one point stated from your own property. I'm not. <laughs> you're right. He didn't. You're right. He didn't say that. You did. No, I didn't. You just did. <laughs> no, I said from stores, as in like blacklisted. This guy. This guy is known to fuck dogs, so I'm not giving him any. I'm not. I'm not allowing him in my store. All right. That's uh, that's what uh, that's what he meant. He didn't mean. He didn't mean uh, guys with guns come into someone's house and then throw them out. No. If he could, what he could, what could happen is that um, the power company decides to cut the house off or what what have you in order to get them out voluntarily. But it's not. Uh, it, he never advocated. Uh, this uh, supposed jagged inconsistency from everything else he says like, oh shit is my headphones banging against my damn uh, pop filter uh, but um, uh, sorry, oh crap I lost my train of thought uh, but what Hapa means in the sort of like um, what Hapa means is that society should as a piece of advice uh, not associate with um uh, sort of advocates of uh, uh, sort of social justice warriors or communists or uh, dog fuckers or what have you because it uh, would result in a sort of less pleasant society 
He's not going to force people to um, uh, do this, but he's he's suggesting it, and he thinks that um, by spontaneous order, that will generally be what happens. You can disagree with his conclusion that this will happen by spontaneous order, but you can't paint him as a statist for uh, um, uh, believing that it will happen. You get what I mean? Yeah, well, this that's the point which I was attempting to get at. So, yeah. you, so you've established this standard that, okay, the specific example you used is if somebody goes into a store and store doesn't want somebody in their store, so they kick them out. Okay, so so this is a, uh, a fair representation of what you're explaining when you're explaining physical removal, correct? Pretty much. Uh, in Hoppe's view of a libertarian society, society would be structured around covenant communities, and covenant yes. communities are functionally uh, planned societies which no. are owned let him finish sure are which are owned by a, a single entity or multiple entities working together to maintain the uh, you know to upkeep the the said society sorry my ping went down and I, I was sort of nervous about how I was coming through for a second there but anyway yeah. We're in a society which is owned by a entity like that, a uh, a physical social contract, and uh, and they have a physical social contract, and uh, it operates like a store. What are they going to do to you if they think you're degenerate? They're going to kick you out of the covenant community to use force to remove you from the community. Yes, uh, or or hold on, oh. Your assertion is that uh, covenant communities are uh, sort of miniature states, correct? Oh, functionally, that's what De facto. Hoppe described. That's what Hoppe is describing. And I remember oh, just before before you finish, I actually I, I mentioned this in. I, I hate to bring this fucker up, but I I mentioned this in one of the streams which we did with uh, Blue last year, which some people tried to turn into a meme. Uh, I said Hoppe was an ANCOM, and I never actually was able to articulate that point uh, to its completion, but this is exactly why, that, why I say that, because that is literally the exact same argument that the uh, sort of uh, Marxists LARPing as anarchists kind of ANCOMs that's how they argue they would get rid of uh, people who are property in their societies. They have right. localist um, societies which are set, which are organized around worker councils. And if you're caught using private property, then you're physically removed from the community. Right. So what, Hoppe, what Hoppe is describing would be society. Yet when the ANCOM proposes it, we both would uh, say that that's ridiculous and that that's basically just a state. But when Hoppe proposes it and says that it's private, now all of a sudden it's compatible with libertarianism. All right, so that's what you're saying. Um, all right, to that I would... Res all right, here's my response to this. Would you argue, by that logic, that a hotel is a state? No, because the hotel doesn't have a monopoly on arbitration and doesn't run an entire city. All right, but why? Why? All right, number one, I don't think that uh, entire communities cover cities. Sort of like, all right, let's say that you know what a gated community is, right? Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah, basically, it's sort of one of those things where um. We'll give you. We'll give uh, builders and the homeowners a place to build, buy, rent, uh, whatever houses. And we have an infrastructure. We have we have like sidewalks. We have roads. We have street lights. We have electricity, internet, sewers. We have a nice pool, etc., etc. And of course, it's a legitimately uh, homestead and, and legitimately obtained property, which of course um, the owner or whatever owns that 
uh, infrastructure will... Oh, shit, my ping. Um, all right, there we go. Um, uh, sort of... Um, crap. Uh, sort of, so there's legitimately obtained and very privately owned and operated infrastructure that they can rent out to uh, homeowners and individuals, uh, etc., etc., and, of course... In order to live there, you must follow certain rules. Uh, obviously, you can't violate the NAP, and we and they've got a, uh, a security force to deal with how you can't, or s sort of what they materialize the NAP as, um, and uh, what they what the penalties, what they will sort of in a contract. If you do this, you will get what why will happen to you uh, in this community, and what they can do is. Um, Sort of like, hold up, ah, oh, shit, I'm I'm terrible at speaking today. Um, but basically, it's one of those con contractual things. Like, let's go back to the hotel example. Let's say that in order to live in a hotel, you must, you can't, you obviously can't violate the nap, but you also can't have uh, speakers on, or like these loud speakers on past 10 o'clock, or you can't, uh, you can't have, um... You can't live with cows in your apartment. Uh, you can't uh, do uh, things that would that we say you can't, and if you don't, then we will not allow you to live here. All right. You'd say that this is a uh, contractual agreement. If you want to live here, you must abide by these rules, and, you, and you'd say that this is legitimate for a hotel to do, yes? Yeah, uh, the difference mainly, though, is that it's uh, very important to note that why Hoppe compared it to a social contract. Well, hold up, hold up, hold up. I, let's get to that in a little later. Right? What, is, what is the difference between a hotel doing something like this, uh, uh, giving out places for and uh, spe specified rules... Uh, sort of a hotel, a singular building doing that in a gated community of uh, pre-built infrastructure um, doing the same thing. What is the difference? The difference is very simple. The hotel is owned by one entity and a gated community is a coalition of individual property owners. So, I'm not saying... I, so, what... No, you're missing to, you're missing the point. What is what if a uh, man who builds an infrastructure for houses uh, that but not express explicitly a singular building, but sort of like a little block like they have sidewalks, they have a pool, kind of like a resort, but for houses. What what is different about uh, that uh, sort of the this gated this gated neighborhood that's privately owned and a hotel that's privately owned doing the same thing uh, enforcing rules contractual rules that you must follow to live here then it's uh, not, what's then it's not well, a coalition of prop then it's not a coalition of property owners in which case yeah. you have no basis for saying that people are going to be doing anything on the basis of property because fundamentally nobody's going to be owning their property they're going to be yeah. renting it from the owner of the community, which is perfectly uh, legitimate. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that situation at all, ethically. It's just, it, it's not, it's not as you described, a question of property rights. All right, but what if someone uh, decides to um, have these sort of uh, plots they can sell, which they will, uh, which are going to be privately owned by homeowners and home home builders, but the uh, electricity is or stuff like the infrastructure water pipes electricity etc etc is uh, owned by the community and even then what is um the sort of problem with a voluntary contractual agreement of property owners to follow certain rules and in return the property owners will um uh, voluntarily give out the sort of like certain benefits like for example say that uh, part of and part of the uh, uh, coalition is a uh, electricity or a, a guy who owns the electric infrastructure beneath the houses, and they can and if you if you want to if you can follow the rules, uh, we'll give you electricity or electricity at a discount. What's what is status about that? Uh, you're asking several things there. First yeah, off, I'm sorry. We need, first off, we need to establish 
is the community owned by one guy or is it basically just a I don't want to say homeowners association but homeowners association where a bunch of people who completely own their property uh, associate with one another and make decisions as a group either or well I mean we're going to have to do one or the other I mean they probably can't both exist don't get me wrong no in a well, libertarian society but I mean they're going to have completely different social dynamics and how and it's going to differ completely on how property works as I mentioned earlier if a person who owns a large plot of land uses that to sell houses and they sell them to people at a discount or rent it out or otherwise do some sort of lease arrangement then it's hard to say if like, they actually own their property if they sell it, sell that plot of land completely and the person is the owner of their property then they are free to abide or not abide by those rules as they wish Yes, but then you would uh, have stuff like, um, say, your electricity turned off, or you would be banned from the nearby shopping center, etc., etc., if you violated the contract. I, That's what I was, don't understand. What, uh, hold what, up, what, what contract? The contract that... All right, all right. I'm sorry. I'm Social being contract. I'm being retarded today. Um, let me let me just let me start over. Um, uh, or we are we are getting close to an hour, so ah, I think we right. right. also wanted to point out something which I wasn't able to, which oh. is that earlier you mentioned that uh, the 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 coveted community was being. Uh, pre-existing properties and I don't know if you meant to say that because you went on uh, later to sort of specify that uh, it was like a, a homeowners association uh, effectively or it was like a, a planned a planned community already built and the houses were built by the person building the community and they weren't owned by anyone before but yeah there's a there's a big difference between the two and that's uh, major problems with Hoppianism is that, uh, yeah, according to Hoppe, uh, you could, in his uh, ideal, and not necessarily ideal, but you could have a, a covenant community built around uh, already existing properties, and uh, that's fundamentally a big part of what of where it becomes coercive is that. Uh, Part of his problem uh, with is that there's not really a uh, a choice to opt. There's not a choice to opt out, and there's not a choice to sign it. So it's not really uh, consensual. Then, actually, that is completely false. Um, basically, if a property or a sort of if um, if a sort of quote unquote covenant community, sort of a, a voluntary contractual agreement of uh, following law and order were to form around um, a property that does not want to comply, what they could do are perfectly voluntary means of encouraging that property to either uh, join or to just leave. Sort of like, um, if, uh, like again, if the uh, electricity, if what's uh, providing the electricity in the community, sorry, gets uh, is uh, owned by sort of the covenant community, or as part of the covenant community, then what they could do is charge them higher rates, or just turn, or just cut them off, in the hopes that that will convince them to either comply or get out. And uh, same with sort of shopping centers. But um, even then, I don't think that if a community were to have sort of a straggler in sort of a very integral spot, um were to not comply, I think they, that a potential forming formation of a covenant community will, of course, um, uh, take him into account and um, adjust what they're going to do until he moves out or decides to comply. Like, here's what you're not exactly understanding about what covenant communities are. They are not some magical thing above humanity. They're not some... They're not... He, he doesn't... Papa expressly makes it clear that these communities are voluntary agreements of people and are not coercive. No one is forced into them they, or no one is as in, and by force I don't mean in the sort of um, de facto or uh, communist 
oh, you got a work or starve kind of force, I mean, at gunpoint. This is you it, it, your, your biggest problem, which I've been failing to explain to you the past hour, is, um, is that uh, Covenant communities are sort of voluntary associations, and you can and uh, are based on contract. They're private uh, they're sort of private means of providing law, sort of niche laws, like, um, stuff like, uh, keeping, uh, um, uh, or, so, like, say, uh, keeping volume down late at night, or, uh, or specific laws, like, say, a Jewish, uh, covenant community will impose, will have, uh, Jewish, uh, requirements on the contract, or Christian, or Satanic, or black or white or, or homosexual or whatever communities will do different things in a sort of mosaic society of uh, covenant communities and that's that's kind of the purpose of covenant communities in Hoppe's view and that is to more easily organize uh, order in a libert in a stateless society without the state, without a coercive government and to organize people into to sort of move with their feet, like say a, a gay person wouldn't what would want to uh, live in a gay community, or a Christian would want to live in a Christian community, etc. etc. It's it's kind of like say it's like a hotel or a Discord server or a uh, or other things like that. It's con it's contractual. It's not coercive. Quick question. Yes. Is a cop is a Hoppian Community Covenant a coalition of people who own their homes, or is it owned by a guy or a company? Uh, either or, really. It's one of those things where it can it can look like anything. It could be sort of it could have a it could have like sort of a community council, or it could have a uh, over it could have a um, sort of a, a total private owner or an elder or what have you. It can look like anything as long as it is not coercive, and as long as it like as long as it doesn't violate human, as long as it's not violating human rights. It's not given any special privileges. It's completely contractual. It's basically like moving into a hotel that has specific rules, or a pool which has specific rules, or well, or a Discord server which has specific rules, and that's the thing. You're if you want to be here, you have to follow these rules. If you, if you don't want to follow these rules, then there's the exit, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm asking because one of the things I mentioned in my Always Go Full Hoppian video is that mm -hmm. inevitably if you have a coalition of private owner or private homeowners, that's going to be incredibly unlikely that they're going to enter into a contract where they fundamentally have very little to gain and a lot to lose. Because well, yeah, I, have a lot. I tend to restrict myself to ethical arguments against Hoppianism, but yeah, I, I, that's a point which I don't really stress as much as I probably should, which is that uh, this what Hoppe is describing is totally not even close to what would actually happen in a libertarian society, uh, because his arg because his argument is <laughs> that. You're you're roboting really hard right now. Uh, I think it might be on my end. It's probably on my end. Give it a minute. I don't know what the hell this means. Uh, I, sorry, I disconnected. Damn. All right. Well, you were both roboting pretty hard, so it might have been something on my end. I was no, it, well, I heard roboting too, so it was... It, it said RTC disconnected, but yeah, a point that uh, I haven't made as uh, as much as I should with um, Hoppian uh, arguments is that this, is abs this absolutely would never happen in a, a stateless society. Why is it? It assumes that um, because a lot of people are political is what it assumes, and that a lot of people have strong political opinions and they have a uniform opinion, and that's not necessarily at all the case. So people would get would uh, 
like assume that it's a high pri- it's a high enough priority that they don't want to associate with the occasional retard who wants to go back to the way things were in the 1930s when fascism was prominent over what is simply efficient and what works for them uh, in a convenience sense. That's why I, I and that's arguments uh, which could be presented uh, other than that the high psychic profit would be that um, central that uh, out of convenience uh, com- that uh, commodities and associations tends to be centralized on a uh, grander scale and that's just demonstrably inaccurate the more things become can um, innovate the more things innovate and the more um, uh, progress the more decentralized they tend to be and the less input cost it tends to uh, require to have these things function Nah. All right, you want to you want to address that real quick, and then we'll make our closing statements. Well, here's the thing: I think that people would uh, voluntarily sign contracts in a sort of um, like obviously they they're not exactly uh, static, and by static I don't mean oh well, uh, the contracts will just change without everyone's consent, but sort of a start small, such as a um sort of like a uh, mutual defense militia, or here's what the NAP is, or not or not what the NAP is. Uh, here's how the NAP will be enforced. Um, you know, here's what you can do, like sort of a... Uh, actually, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking up. I lost my train of thought. Uh, but I sort of... Um, sort of like a mutually, you do this, you or I'll do this, but you do have to do that kind of thing, like... Or... Uh, I have I lost my train of thought entirely. Uh, should, I think we should just make. We're over an hour now, yeah. so should we? Just, yeah, let's uh, 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 let's just make. This has gone a lot. I'm. I i do not know why I'm uh, so shit at I'm so shit at talking right now, but um. I mean, let's I, let's yeah. do let's uh do this. I think we should yeah. continue the discussion at a later date. Yeah. You guys up for that? Sure. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Let's uh, let's come in a bit more prepared next time. There's, there's another point I was going to make, but yeah, I guess we could stop. I was just going to add on to what I was saying previously. All right. Okay, so uh, in terms of closing statements, how about me and Esso go, then you have the last word. Hop, Lou, sound good? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. All right. Esso, you okay with that? All right. Okay. So my thinking is that on principle, I understand the idea of the covenant communities and on a certain level I agree with it in the sense that homeowners and people who own property will voluntarily associate and there may even they may even come up with rules by which you can be participating members of that community however I strongly believe that the emphasis that Hop puts on in terms of how those rules are going to be presented how those rules will be structured and the surprisingly authoritarian way in which they are opposed or in which they are enforced in such a way that it greatly resembles thought crime where you're not allowed to think certain things or advocate certain ideas that otherwise they agree with it sounds like a confession of weakness in lack of confidence in his own ideas that he doesn't think that his communities can withstand opposing ideas or opposing viewpoints so much so that he would rather them be physically removed than to attempt to persuade them to his point of view. This is, well, terrifying to someone like me. And I know saying that's terrifying is not an argument, but I think it at least gives you an idea of where I'm coming from. Can I go? Yes, you're yeah. done. All right, well, um, essentially have the same... Uh, position as filthy heretic but if you but if you read um Hans Hermann Hoppe's writings i think that um Hoppians or people who defend Hoppe uh, significantly uh downplay uh Hoppe's arguments for centralization 
um, as a operational mode for society, and that's the point that I was getting to. He may oppose um, the concept of a state or political authority, but yes, he does make the distinction between a, gov a government and a state, and that's exactly why. Because what he's because um, it was um, I'm trying to find a way to put this. It's not going to create more or more of a debate. But in, but I, I sort of touched upon everything that I had to say in this regard as well. Um, his view of uh, social interactions and the sort of the the basic fallacies which he makes about um, the group preferences and collective uh, preferences of certain demographics, which. Um, uh, he argues that a libertarian social order would need to exist to combat that's gonna create that creates um, especially with consistency considering that he's uh, he's a self-proclaimed Austrian economist based on his, his own uh, business cycle his own conception of the business cycle but yeah I I don't think that um, Hoffa's ideas are at the very least, uh, morally compatible with libertarianism. There's a strong case to be made that uh, incompatible as well as we've made throughout the last hour. But yeah, the point I was going to make, um, aside from the fact that just practically a, it, these uh, libertarian society would never really form around these covenant communities and would never centralize like this is it's actually interestingly it was a point that that journey i don't know if anyone watching is familiar with journey but it's a point he was making which is that um it's not necessarily some a point god damn it i'm having a hard time talking right now but oh, aren't we all i'm i'm on your side here but the point which he sort of touched upon, which greatly adds on to this debate, which is that, um, yeah, there are people who have, based on different time preferences, you know, that's this is something Hoppe doesn't understand because he has sort of a, a collective view of, of um, he doesn't have a marginal view of human action, essentially, but... Um, because there are so many di variations in time preference and all of these marginal traits which make people value things differently, that's the reason why centralization does not uh, occur naturally in markets as a result of uh, any sort of innovation. And uh, I, I, I think in a libertarian society, you would get you would have all sorts of different associations within uh, different stretches of land. You would have neighborhoods with uh, which with people that are associating both with wage labor jobs and mutual aid communities. In some cases, you might have both. You could have people with entire little factories built into one of their spare office rooms that just churn out what stuff that they then go out and sell. Yeah, populism has a lot of issues, and I don't like a lot of people are under the impression that I just despise Hoppe. Really, but yeah, I think that um, it's definitely. The beginning. It's easy to see why it breeds authoritarians, and it's easy to see why uh, a lot of libertarians taking Hoppe's perspective don't necessarily understand the harm of centralization. Alright, you done? Yeah. Alright. Uh, my closing statement is that. Um, uh, I think you two are still kind of or not misunderstanding and misrepresenting Hoppe in what he believes, not only why and how covenant communities would form, but what the covenant communities are and how they would work. It's one of you're you're so you're kind of um you kind of believe 
that it's sort of some centralized de facto or a de jure state, um, when in reality it is anything but. It is a completely private, and uh, by private I don't mean private bads, but sort of private uh, rights where it, you have a covenant community must hold up its end of the contract, otherwise it can be sued by uh, other people, or by a third party arbiters, as well as uh, be disassociated from it, whereas the state, of which is the you can't sue the state with the state. Um, if they fail to uphold their end of the contract, and I think you two are, and it's one of those things where Hoppe believes that the covenant communities and contractual societies would form because of the fact that it is a easier way to sort of a coordinate a libertarian society. It's again I, it's, the best analogy for it is the hotel analogy. Uh, you pay for you you don't pay in a hotel if you want to live there. It has rules and it has benefits. Uh, as like for example. Um, if you don't want to have to worry about paying for a trillion different services for like sewers and uh, and street lamps, what you could do instead is have uh, a covenant community, which by the way, covenant communities are inherently competitive, uh, provide those for you in the same way that a hotel would provide you with things like a bedroom, a breakfast bar, an elevator, some lights, some power, some water, etc., etc. And I believe that it's it's one of those things where this is how Hoppe believes that libertarianism or anarcho-capitalism would play out. And it's one of, it's one of the and it's it's kind of like saying it's kind of like saying that um uh that it won't play out like this or that it shouldn't play out like this is that the state is once again the only thing that can provide things like uh, order and uh, these public services and you have to pay for a trillion billion different things separately and the like where, but that's that's completely wrong as Hoppe points out with these sort of covenant communities and I believe that another thing of which is uh, significantly understated um, is that it's a very good way of organizing culture uh, different cultures and different ideals with the least amount of conflict. Like, for example, a, a gay community, gay people can go live in a gay covenant community, and uh, Christians can go live in a Christian covenant community. And what's better is that one can make uh, market decisions off it. Like, for example, a Chris, a gay covenant community probably won't be having uh, that many children, so that they probably. So merchants and uh, uh, businessmen probably won't be selling things like diapers and formulae there, and instead thing and will instead uh, uh, sell things like brothels and sex toys. Whereas in the Christian community, it's the complete opposite. And I think that's another thing that is sort of an advantage of covenant communities that we've been understating this past hour. But um, yeah. But hopefully next time we we're here, we'll be able to talk a lot more cohesively and actually know how to say things and not continuously lose our uh, train of thought and be uh, molested by the basketball Americans fucking with our pings. Well, what's going to happen is that uh, basketball Americans are going to completely depopulate their countries and flood into the United States. <laughs> prove, Always. Me, prove me wrong. Yeah, my problem is I've I'm going on like eighteen hours right now. I've been awake, so Ugh. I yeah, can I've... fucking like my brain hurts. That's how fucking tired I am. Well, yeah. that sounds like yeah. me every night. I haven't been getting much sleep lately, and I have no freaking idea why. And it's not we're like... recording. We're still recording right now, but anyways, oh. yeah, we should. Uh, yeah, I should stop soon. So yeah, thank you, uh, Hoplu, for for uh, coming out to talk to us about this, and it was interesting. Yeah. It was an interesting All discussion. Right. Oh yeah, sent you a bunch of great art in uh, DMs. I know, and I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I now I have to I have to see this for myself. Anyways, no, yeah, miss.
Um, I found the lowest quality ones that I possibly could. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna st- I'm gonna stop the recording now. Uh, thank you everyone for stopping by, and we'll see you next time. Bye.